Let's take a look at problem solving for addition and subtraction. Unlike all the other problems we've done this chapter, this section really forces us to read our word problems carefully and dissect them. We're going to take a look at two problems and do them together, and then you guys are going to solve two problems by yourselves. Now, there are a few ways that we can solve these problems, so let's take a look. Our first problem says, hot air balloon festivals draw large crowds of people. The attendance on the first day of the festival was 17,350. On the second day, attendance was 18,925. How many more people attended the hot air balloon festival on the second day? Before I do anything, I wanna go back into my problem and underline the important information. I'm gonna first start with my question. My question, what I'm going to try and solve is, how many more people attended the hot air balloon on the second day? So that's what I'm trying to solve. Now I'm going to go back into my problem and I'm going to use that question to help guide the information I'm trying to find. I'm going to go back into my problem and look at first day attendance and second day attendance. And I'm going to circle that information so I know what I'm going to use when I solve my problem. So when we go back into our problem and we look for first day attendance, the attendance on the first day of the festival was 17,350 people. On the second day, the attendance was 18,925. And I wanna know how many more people attended the second day. So let's set up a picture that's gonna help us solve this problem. I need my first day and my second day. And so I'm gonna use rectangles to help show those number of people. Now when I'm drawing my model, I really wanna make sure that if a number is larger than the other number, then that rectangle is larger. So I can see the difference between our two numbers, in this case, between our two days. So on the top, I have my first day, 17,350 people. And on my bottom, I have my second day, 18,925 people. And what I'm trying to find is how many more people attended the festival on the second day. So I wanna know, what is this gap? What is this section equal to? So right here, this is what I'm trying to find. This is my question. Now, when I look at this model as a whole, here is my whole piece. This is my second day. That's my whole piece that I'm comparing to. And then here's my first day. Now, I want you to notice that the first day in blue plus my question, they add up to equal my whole. So if I were to set this up as an addition problem, it would look something like this. 17,350 plus my unknown, that is equal to 18,925. So I'm trying to find what this unknown is. In order for me to do that, I'm gonna need to do some subtraction. I had 17,350 plus something is going to equal 18,925. So I'm going to set up a subtraction problem. 18,925, that's my whole, minus my part of 17,350 is going to equal my second part. So that's how I, I have to think about these problems as wholes and parts. In this case, I have my whole already because I'm comparing my second day to something else. So let's subtract. 5 minus 0 is 5. 2 minus 5 or 20 minus 50. I can't do that. So I need to borrow from my hundreds. My 9 is going to become 8 and my tens place now becomes 12 or 120. And I can now subtract my five tens from that. So 12 minus five is seven. Eight hundreds minus three hundreds is five hundreds. Eight thousands minus seven thousands is one thousands. And one ten thousand minus one ten thousand is zero. So here is my answer. Let's see if 1,575 fits in that blank. The way I can check my work is by looking at that hole. So what I said before was 18,925 was my hole, 
17,350 was one of my parts, and then I was missing my other part. If I take these two pieces and add them together, I should get my whole of 18,925. We can check our work that way. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check my work. Now I want you to notice a few things how I set up these two problems, the addition and the subtraction. Notice how I lined up my place values. My ones are all on top of each other, my tens, my hundreds, my thousands. This helps me make sure that I'm adding and subtracting accurately. So let's add, and when we add, we should get our second day, which is 18,925. If we don't, we've made a mistake, and we need to go back and figure out where our mistake is. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12, or 120, so I need to carry that 100. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9. 7 plus 1 is 8, and I bring down my 1. Now I'm going to check, is this the same as that? Yes, it is. So my question was, how many more people? When I see how many more, I'm usually going to subtract. How many more people attended the Hot Air Balloon Festival on the second day? 1,575 more people. That is my answer. Now there was a lot of work that went on to find that answer and then check my work, but the checking the work part is super important. Let's take a look at another problem. During an event, a hot air balloon traveled a distance of 5,110 feet during the first trip and 850 more during the second trip. How far did it travel during the second trip? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to underline my question. How far did it travel during the second trip? Now, does it tell us? Let's go back and look. It says... On the first trip, it traveled 5,110 5, feet. And on the second trip, it traveled 850 more than the first. But it does not tell us how many it traveled on the second. We're going to draw a model to help us with this, and this problem as well. We need to first start out with our first trip. Our first trip was... 5,110 feet. This is our first trip. Our second trip traveled 850 more feet. Now we want to be sure to label our model correctly. So this blue part, that was our first trip. This green part was the extra amount that it traveled for our second trip. So this green part isn't just our second trip. This whole piece is our second trip. And we want to know what does that whole represent. The same like our problem that we had before where we had a whole and two parts. We have that same philosophy here. We have our whole, which is the second trip, which we don't know yet. And we have our two parts. Now over here, when we had a part and the whole, we had to subtract. For this problem, we have two parts and we're missing our whole. So what we need to do is we need to add because we want to know how far did it travel during the second trip. So let's do some addition. 5,110 plus 850. And again, I'm adding up my numbers by lining up my place values. I could also add horizontally, and this is actually a problem that would be pretty easy for us to add horizontally or do in our heads. Well, let's go ahead and add vertically. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus five is six. One plus eight is nine. And then I bring down my five. I can do the same thing horizontally. Zero plus zero is zero. 5 plus 1 is 6, 8 plus 1 is 9, and my 5 is in the thousands place. Either way, I get the same answer. Now, when I go and look at my problem, it says, how far did it travel during the second trip? I found how far it traveled. It traveled 5,960 feet. 
during the second trip. I found that by looking at my two parts and adding them up to find my whole. Okay, so we just looked at two problems. One of them we had to do subtraction, one of them we had to do addition. We used models to show both of these. Let's take a look at a problem and I want you to solve this one. Last year, the ticket sales for the commercial hot air balloon ride were $109,076. This year, the ticket sales were $125,805. How much more were the ticket sales this year? We're going to underline our question. How much more were the ticket sales this year, this year, and last year? And I want you to think about how are we going to solve this problem. On your paper, draw yourself a model and solve the problem. This is a how much more problem, but when we draw it as a model, we can really easily see that we're going to have to subtract in order to find our missing piece to figure out how much more. So make sure you set up your subtraction problem. Okay, here's my subtraction problem and make sure you are checking your work. We're going to subtract. I can't take six away from five, so I need to borrow from my neighbor. Unfortunately, my neighbor's a zero, which means I need to borrow from my next neighbor, which is my eight. I'm gonna cross that out and it's gonna become a seven, which is seven hundreds. I'm gonna add a hundred over here to my tens place, which makes that 10. 10 tens is equal to a hundred. I'm then gonna borrow again because now I can, and my 10 is gonna make a nine, and now my ones place is 15. So now I can start my subtraction. 15 minus six is equal to nine. Nine minus seven is equal to two. Seven minus zero is seven. On to my next problem. Nine, or five minus nine. I can't take nine away from five, so I need to borrow from my neighbor. 15 minus 9 is equal to 6. 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So when I look at my final answer, I have 16,729. That's my difference between these two numbers. Now, just like the first problem we did, we can check to make sure we got the right answer using addition. So let's do that. I've replaced my unknown question mark with the value I, I just found. And the numbers that I'm going to be looking at are my two parts. So my 109,076 plus 16,729. When I add those, I get 125,805, which is exactly what I started with. I know that I've solved this problem correctly. I went back, I checked my work to verify my answer. Let's take a look at one more. There were 665 hot air balloon pilots at a hot air balloon race. There were 1,550 more ground crew members than there were pilots. How many ground crew members were there? So our problem is how many more ground crew members were there? Let's figure out if they tell us how many ground crew members there were. There were 655 hot air balloon pilots, that's something that they give us. And there were 155 more ground crew than pilots. How many ground crew members were there? I want you to go ahead and draw your model and see if you can solve this problem. Our ground crew is what we're trying to find and we don't know how many ground crew members there are. So we need to set up our model. Our model shows us that we have two parts and we're missing our whole. When we have two parts and we're missing our whole, all we need to do is set up addition problem. Okay, here's my addition problem. I have it set up horizontally and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add to find my total number of ground crew members. I start in my ones place, zero plus five is five. My tens place, Five tens plus six tens is 11 tens, but I can't have that many, so I carry 100. Five hundreds plus six hundreds is 11 hundreds, plus one more is 12 hundreds, so I put my two and I carry my thousands. That is my total number of ground crew members, 2,215. 
That's our lesson for today. What's really important about this lesson is that we're reading our problems carefully and we're setting up our models. We need to identify, is this an addition problem or is this a subtraction problem? Our models help us do that by identifying, are we looking at two parts and trying to find our whole, or do we have a part and a whole and a missing part? When we have a part and a whole and a part that's missing, we're gonna subtract. When we have two parts and a whole that's missing, we gotta add. See you tomorrow.